This is not meant to be sensational, right? There's no need for us to sensationalize any data. But the truth of the matter is, for the last two to three years now, guns have been the leading cause of death among kids. Physicians are treaters of the sick and preservers of the healthy. So there really is nothing else that a group of physicians would rally behind other than saving lives. This epidemic is uniquely American. Gun violence is a public health issue and a healthcare issue. This is not Democratic or Republican. This is just protecting humans. Sometimes you have to lose. Sometimes you have to push a boulder up a hill and it has to crash back down on you, but you won't succeed without ever trying. America supports all these bills. And it needs to be the time now where the politicians realize that if government doesn't back us, that they're gonna be voted out. Exactly. We have seen that when we take public health approaches, that we save lives. Motor vehicle accidents are no longer the number one cause of death of children because of safer cars and car seats. We can use that same public health approach to discuss guns and gun safety legislation and create meaningful change. How can we as medical experts help you guys? So what do you need? Do you need more doctors from your state that we can help provide you to provide evidence? Do you need us to come to hearings for you? We are here to collaborate with your office to whip these votes because we are sick of letting children die every day. A typical day is going from meeting to meeting, no breaks, labbing all day, and presenting our statistics and data and research. I usually try to open and say, my name is Dr. Emily Lieberman. I'm a pediatrician, a wife, a mother. I am now also a mass shooting survivor. And I have the unfortunate but unique perspective of now being a survivor of gun violence and also a pediatrician who treats people in the community who have suffered from gun violence. And I think that sets us apart from a lot of the other meetings. We live in Highland Park, which um, prior to July 4th of last year, I think anyone would say was probably one of the safest appearing communities in the country. We're kind of Pleasantville, for lack of a better word. On our nation's most patriotic day, July 4th, our family woke up, put on 4th of July attire, and met with cousins and my parents. Our children were in the streets, there was laughter, we're waving to politicians, and then all of a the sudden there is a horrible popping sound overhead. And it becomes clear very quickly that this is a gun. Seven people were killed and more than 48 others were injured after a gunman opened fire at a 4th of July parade in Highland Park, Illinois. According to the Gun Violence Archive, it was one of 647 mass shootings that took place in 2022. Unfortunately, we've learned that we can't keep our children safe when most of these weapons are on the streets, but what we can do is help prevent these shootings from continuing to occur, which is what we are here to do now for the rest of our life. You can see this is a pediatric surgery OR. And so typically when a patient rolls in, they're gonna be lying down here. And this is where the anesthesiologist is. And then once the patient is asleep, the whole team kind of functions, you know, very much as a well-oiled machine. We've here on the front lines have seen, have felt that 350% increase in the number of kids with gun injuries last year here in New York. The teams are getting increasingly fatigued. The trauma from having to deal with not only children who have gun injuries, but their families, and constantly telling families that they've either lost a loved one to a preventable disease, or that their kid is now disabled for life or brain dead. Then little children, all the organs are closer together. And as a result, every bullet can injure that many more organs and is that much more devastating than let's say a bullet injury in an adult. We have a universal screening program here in our emergency departments where we actually screen all patients for firearm injury risk. 
And if you screen positive for that, there are resources we can give you that help break that cycle of violence before the gunshot even happens. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. AAP guidelines suggest that the best advice is to not have a gun in the home. But for those gun owners that actually do have guns, research shows that only 50% of them are safely storing it. So something that we give out to our patients are these cable locks. This will go through the unloaded empty firearm. It goes in one spot there, you'll lock it, key comes out, and you have a safe firearm. When we talk about gun violence, we are referring to firearm-related suicides unintentional injuries, otherwise known as accidental injuries. We're talking about intentional firearm injuries, which could be firearm violence slash assault, or in a small sliver of cases, things like public mass shootings. And it's really important that we start having this discussion in a very nuanced, granular way, because that is the only way that we're gonna have a productive conversation around potential solutions. You can imagine that the solutions to firearm suicide are far different than the solutions needed to stop mass shootings, which are far different than the solutions that are needed for firearm violence. We cannot lump it all together. I've lived in the same house uh, my whole life and I, I don't see myself moving anytime soon. We're here to stay, city kid. Growing up in this neighborhood of gun violence, it's always been prevalent, always something I've seen around me. It just never dawned on me that it could affect me in a way that would change my life. The night of the shooting, uh, we had just went on a family outing came back home, everyone was in bed. I decided to go back outside for a charger and I was sitting in the passenger seat of the car and all of a sudden someone runs up to the driver's side. They said something, waved some hand symbols and, and that was it, they just started unloading. When we got to the hospital, the only injury was gunshot wound to the back. I had a nicked vertebrae, a severed spinal cord and uh, both my lungs were ruptured, internal bleeding, the whole nine yards. I still have the bullet in my chest today. I was in the hospital for about six weeks. I was on my mother's insurance. It was an HMO, so we got lucky we didn't have to pay for the visit, but the visit itself was north of $100,000. When I left the hospital, I thought the hardest part of the journey was done, but that was not true. When I got home, I realized I got steps in the front and the back, and now I can't use my legs. How am I gonna get up there? While insurance providers tend to cover the majority of medical bills immediately following a shooting, survivors say costs continue to rack up over time. Physical therapy or home renovations may not be covered by insurance, and finding programs to help cover the costs can be a challenge. As a result, many patients have turned to crowdsourcing to fundraise for ongoing care needs. There's a, a lot of things that have had to come out of pocket because they're just niche enough for the insurance not to cover them but uh, important enough that you actually need them with a disability. So I would say roughly maybe 20 to 30,000 total as of now has been paid out of pocket. Treating gunshot wounds and patients is extremely expensive. We know that treating a patient with gun injuries, for example, is three times more expensive than treating any other type of trauma. This really speaks to the complexities of the wounds, the complications that result from it and the long ongoing disabilities that really require a lot of intense medical management. So here we're seeing that gun violence costs the United States um, over $550 billion per year, uh, which is an extraordinary amount. Our politicians who enabled this assault weapons ban in 1994 truly were trailblazers at the time. And sadly, the clause was written that it would sundown in 10 years. So from my perspective, we're asking Washington, D.C. to reinitiate a law that was a law we're not rewriting the history books here. We are asking them to continue the history books. The rates of gun violence are only going up. As we delved deeper and saw how much of a problem this is, these underserved communities, the health disparities, specifically brown and black communities, having horrific day-to-day -day gun violence and losing many more brown and black people to gun violence, we realize that we have to really broaden as physicians some of our lobbying. We do know that gun safety policies, such as assault weapon bans, background checks, waiting periods, licensing requirements that most gun owners actually do support, will save lives. And then we know that other policies, for example, that address the root causes of structural racism, inequity, will improve firearm violence in inner city communities. So. My question really always is, how can we have that conversation in a way that legitimizes both sides 
and their concerns that can really lead to productive solutions rather than just this them versus us discussion. Your turn. I'm going probably, probably, I'm going to probably go into it. Gatherella. Oh, no! If this is the public health crisis that we believe it is, then gun violence prevention is going to be a priority in the next election, and these lawmakers need to be held accountable for their decisions. Childhood trauma and violence perpetuates childhood trauma and violence. And so in this country, as we continue to have more and more gun violence and children who are witnessing these horrific events, how it's affecting their family, they're actually more likely to become violent themselves. We're trying to change the narrative in our house to something terrible happened and our parents did everything possible to try to protect us and teach them that despite adversity that might happen, we will always try to rise above it and find solutions to problems. But our question is back to lawmakers. Have they done everything in their power to save lives?